it's crucial that we back up the data from these cards. Here's all of our videos in the DCIM file in the Canon folder. You can see here I've got QuickTime movies. We could just manually back these up. Final Cut 10, even in itself, has an archive. Unfortunately, it doesn't necessarily recognize this card is available to us. When I go into Final Cut Pro 10, I go ahead and I choose Import from Camera, because this is where we would get in the bottom left, the ability to create an archive. It just doesn't see these cards. So I'm going to hide Final Cut 10, and I'd like to show you a utility that's on your Macintosh called Disk Utility. And Disk Utility is how we're going to back up these cards. You're going to be taking these out in the field, and you'll likely wipe them out in the field. So it's your job to make a backup, and maybe two backups, while you're out in the field, and verify those backups work before you wipe the card. By having multiple copies on at least a second hard drive, it'll mean that if a hard drive dies, it'll mean you don't lose all this valuable work because of equipment failure. To launch Disk Utility, I could hunt it down. It's in the Utilities folder in your Applications folder, but I'll show you a neat Mac OS X trick where I click on the Spotlight icon and I type in Disk Utility. And there it is, and I'll press the Enter key and it launches Disk Utility. Disk Utility has the ability to make DMG or images of given drives and partitions. And you can see on the left-hand side, there's where my drive is. There's where the Canon card is. And if I go up to the File menu, I can say a new image directly from this. And that works great, but it's going to waste, be a little bit wasteful. And it's going to be a little bit wasteful because if you take a look towards the bottom at the mount point, it's going to be wasteful because I'm only using six of the eight gigs of this card, meaning I'd end up with a file wasting two gigs. The trick will be to build a disk image and build a new disk image and copy everything to it. And the one trick I want to explain is that you want to, as much as possible, match exactly the way the card is. And you want to give it a good naming system so you don't misidentify cards. So let's go ahead and do that. Under the file menu, we're going to go up to new. We're going to say a new blank disk image. Let's talk about the naming system first. The naming system I'd suggest that you would use is based on the day, time, and year the card is shot, as well as what camera it came from. So this was shot on September 2nd, 2011. I'm going to type in the name as 2011, 09 for the month, 02 for the day, and the camera was camera A. Camera B would camera B, letter B, etc. And you can always make this A.1, A.2, A.3 if you shot multiple cards in that given day. I'm going to copy that name and paste it directly into the disk image name. I want it when it mounts to have the same exact name as the DMG file does. The size for this ought to be the size of the card itself. 8.2 gigabytes matching exactly the way the card is. I'd like its format to match the format of the card itself. Therefore, I'm going to pick ms.fat. It's already picked the correct partition for me, but it's this bottom choice, this read-write disk image that I'd like to change. And I'd like to change it from a, just a straight DMG file, not an ISO, a C, C, DVD, CD master. I could pick a sparse disk, which will only take up the space needed, but I'm gonna pick a sparse bundle disk image just in case you do any updates. The difference between the two is sparse bundle disk image is a little bit newer. And if you use any synchronous software, like Carbon Copy Cloner, or you use uh, Super Duper. Sparse Bundle Disk Image has a little bit smarter of a mechanism for keeping stuff in sync when you back them up. So with that being chosen, I'm going to create my image. The image is created on my desktop. I'm going to open up the card, and I'm going to use a Select All, and just drag the entire contents of the card to the disk image and let it copy. This will provide me something that matches the card that I can then back up into multiple places. So while this is copying, I'll point out that you should take this sparse bundle image and you should make two copies of it, one on a different hard drive. That way, if one hard drive dies, you'll know that you've got the other backing up your entire day. You'll do this for each card that you use, back up and wipe out, and you'll keep two copies. Later, when we go to use Final Cut Pro, Final Cut Pro will copy the media for us, making a copy inside of its own events directory, and you could back that up as well for long-term storage.
Now that you know how to backup cards, we're ready to start ingesting this footage into Final Cut Pro 10. You should do this process for both your cards from your DSLR cameras as well as from your separate audio recording system like the Zoom 4N. The goal here is the backup, backup, backup. Storage is cheap at this point. When you're done, you can see that this is a standard disk image. If you right click on it, you can eject it. This is the file you'd back up, the sparse image bundle. 